The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Happy holidays to everyone. We'll start out the day looking at the DAX. It's still trading over there. You'll notice, notice that it's backing off to a 61% retracement. Very interesting. Should have some good support there. Light volume this week, usually. This is, I think, the, one of the weakest volumes of the year, but, you know, things change quickly at times. Uh, the next one that I wanted to show you here is the uh, German DAX. Let me get this. Let's try this again, Larry. Let's try looking at the uh, Nikkei. You'll be able to see it. But we want to get our first guest on the line, which is Tom Hugard today. Tom, how are you doing? Uh, maybe Can we you... don't have Tom on. Yo, oh, there we go. We've got you on the line now. How are you, my friend? I'm very good, sir. How are you? I'm very good. We have a question from one of our listeners for you, and that is, do you take into account in any news-related items in the market, like uh, Federal Reserve meeting and uh, re major reports and stuff like that? Well, yes, I, I do, I, 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 because I, I don't want to have a big position just ahead of some on big news. So unless I have a position open that has a, a certain amount of profit buffer, uh, I, I will have a stop loss at break even, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't anticipate the direction of a news event. I mean, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen, I have enough experience to know that uh, no matter how well I guess, I, I can still be on the wrong side even when I'm right. So I, I prefer to stand aside and then trade the aftermath. Okay. Do you have any uh, hints about, about trading the uh, holiday markets like we have now? You know, we got a half a day in the stock market tomorrow, and uh, it'll be probably uh, game on, I imagine, the day after Christmas. But do you, do you do any trading at all during the holidays? And if you do, how do you handle it? Do you just do trades just a few, just a few hours, or how, what, what's your schedule? Okay, so my schedule, I, I can only relate to what I did last year, but I had my two best trading days of the year on the 24th of December and the 26th of December. And I think, you know, barring any other formidable uh, trading days in the future, which of course could happen, but the 24th of December was just a one-way street down. It's what I call a classical trend day. And you don't know it's going to be a trend day uh, until sort of late in the day you're thinking this is going to this is gonna close right at this lows. And I, th I think the, the S&P 500 had already declined throughout from the 15th of December. And you sort of had this feeling looking at the DAX being closed because it's in, in Europe, we celebrate Christmas on the 24th and you, you celebrate on the 25th. So you have this discrepancy where we are closed on the 24th, but you're open, but, but volumes are abysmal. And often people think that abysmal volumes results to no trading. Um, but actually, when you have a directional play, your market can really get it pushed to extremes on low volume days. And that's exactly what happened on the 24th of December 2018. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think the 26th of December is going to be one of the most uh, comical trading days I've ever been because I was at a Christmas dinner and I somehow had to navigate the 1100 point rise in the Dow Jones, which was its biggest rise ever in terms of points. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I sat and I traded that on a mobile phone underneath a dinner table. It, it was quite, it was quite comical <laughs> and not very professional, but, but it, was, it yeah. was more a question of trying to, to hang on for your dear life for the rally upwards. Wow, that's um, really amazing. But, I, but I, don't, I don't think it's going to be anything like this this year because it seems to me as if the market is, is quite orderly and there seems to be there's a concerted effort to go into the new year with a bang. Yeah, it certainly wants to do that. And of course, we have a lot of statistics that say that, you know, January is one of the pivotal months uh, of the year. That's for sure. Now, we have uh, one of our, uh, one of, I can answer the question. One of our folks is asking if you're, if you're married. Yes, he's married. He's got a beautiful little uh, three-year-old daughter and uh, a wonderful little stepson. But uh, yes, you're still married to Leanne. And uh, that's been, uh, how long you've been married now, Tom? <laughs> you get 
less for death sentence in this country. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's been it's yeah. been quite a while, but it, it but, but you I, know, yeah. uh, very yeah. happy. Yes, yes, she's a lovely, lovely girl. You got a beautiful home and everything. Uh, do you have any have anything that you'd like to uh, to, to I, impart I would, to us on I these Christmas holidays? I would love to talk to you about. I don't know how much Please. time I have, but yeah, I as really much have as you like. That I think is as incredibly much interesting. Much as you like. Go, go right ahead, my friend. <clears throat> Okay, and you just gotta cut me off if uh, if, if I if I overstep my time. Um, one of the aspects that I got quite famous on as an, an analyst in London in in my working days was my time cycles, and I, I invented this half this half Fibonacci time cycle called the 52 weeks, sorry, the 72 week cycle, and I was able to uh, pinpoint with an outstanding accuracy uh, the turns of the of the Dow Jones index. And I, I'm currently doing some preparation for the next decade of how I think, sort of in rough terms, it's going to pan out. And I know that you are, I'm sure it's not a secret to the listeners that you are, you're not just a big fan of Fibonacci, you are the living embodiment of Fibonacci. So how do you feel about that in the decade that we're going into? Uh, it's going to be 89 years since the low of the 1930, uh, 1929, 1932 crash. It will also be 21 years since the top in 2000. And there's also a link between uh, 2021 and 1987 being it's 34 years. And I could go on and on and on how 2021 shapes up from prior past highs and lows to be a, quite a pivotal year for the stock market. Uh, I'm still working on the, uh, on the findings, but I just thought that, you know, maybe a little teaser for next year. We can get people to tune in and, and listen to the forecast because it, it, I think it's going to be an in incredible decade ahead of us. And I'm not necessarily well, stating that in the most positive emphasis. Yeah, I, I agree that we've had such a big move. And, you know, when the markets give too much, they always take too much back. So that's for sure. I love those counts, though, because I've seen your counts before. You know, I've watched your your uh, programs before, and you've had some wonderful, wonderful. Back in September, you had some wonderful counts. And uh, they've, uh, you know, they, they work some of the time. That's the problem. That's what you have to do is to figure out how much you have to risk. It's all about risk control. And you do a, you do a great job uh, uh, at doing that. One of the questions one of our listeners is asking, Tom, um, is uh, how do you determine how, what percentage you go into? Like, like if you go into the Dow Jones, you put a 50% uh, position on. Is that determined on the amount of risk, uh, the, where, the, where the market stands, profit potential? How do you determine what percentage you use going in? Okay, so as a general rule, I will always uh, trade 100% trade size, and and uh, and that is reflected of the overall risk to my portfolio. So uh, I mm. I don't necessarily subscribe to the the traditional dogma that one should only risk 1% of one's account. It's uh, it it doesn't it doesn't work for me. But of course, that's a that's a that's a preference, that's a taste, and that's one that boils down to one's appetite for risk. Okay, good. Uh, okay. Is that my cue hey. to stop talking? Uh, no, no, that's the tune where we pay a few bills. Would you like to stay on and a add some more? I would love to stay on. Yes. Yeah, we'll be right back with Tom Hugard, folks. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. And Tom, we have a question from one of our listeners. Uh, do you do? You, they've noticed your trading in the uh, Telegraph, but uh, you don't do hardly any trading in uh, crude oil and gold. Is there a specific reason for that? Um, no, there, there isn't. There. I, I think they must have just joined me at a time when uh, when there hasn't been any activity to mention. You had an incredible volatility in the crude oil market earlier in the year, but it's been somewhat subdued. And me being uh, having a, a bias towards momentum objects, I, I simply have stayed clear of that. I've been quite active in the pound against the Australian dollar, the Swiss franc, uh, mostly because of the Brexit. And uh, so I've, I've been fairly active in that. Um, but cr once crude oil will begin to move, and I think it will in anticipation of, uh, of the stock market moving, uh, it, they can be sure that I'll be trading crude oil again. Okay, good. I was, uh, you know, I've seen you trade crude oil before and also gold, so I was just wondering your, your answer to that. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, leave us with before before we start the new year? Um, I, I would just love to wish you and, and your listeners an absolute wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. And I look forward to uh, being on the show in the new year. Well, same, same to you and your lovely family, Tom, and thanks for joining us. We really, really appreciate it. So have a wonderful new year, and we'll see you after the first of the year, and have a good year just like you had in uh, 2019. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, folks. That's Tom Hugard. We'll be having him back right after the first of the year. Uh, when we come up to the break, we'll be talking to our good friend, Mr. Mr. Norm Winsky will be uh, as our guest. Let's talk about a couple of markets that really need our attention this morning, folks. This was sent to us this morning by uh, our good friend, uh, Mr. Z. And uh, Mr. Z was saying to, to buy this uh, natural gas as it backed off. And as you can see last night, we were down $10. We stopped right at the 78% level at 220 and change. Uh, we're trading just a tad above that right now, 222 and a half or something. But it should hold that level. There must have been some type of a news announcement. But there was a little ABCD pattern there along with the 78% level. So that 
de determines what your risk is. Anything below 218 in this, uh, I don't think you'd want to be in it because you've got a lot of support down there. And if it starts breaking, uh, we know that that's not a good sign. And, and natural gas has a tendency to move quite a bit. It's always amaz amazing to me uh, why natural gas is at such a low price considering, I guess there must be a lot of it out there, but it's such a good way for heating and stuff like that. But unfortunately, I guess it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't mean very much. Now, I wanted to bring to your attention a uh, chart from our one of our friends out in, out in Minnesota. This is his opinion of what's going on in the market. I want to bring this up here. This is an Elliott Elliot wave movement. As you can see, he's measuring the, the momentum, the double top momentum there, and he's you know, um, measured all of his wave counts up in here. And of course, we are trading up into that 3221. We're higher than that, actually, in the S&P. Uh, so it's, it should be up here somewhere, but where? <laughs> Who knows? But, uh, well, this is a holiday season, so golly, anything can happen uh, during those times. So we'll do that. Folks, make sure that you... Uh, that you folks take care of the people that uh, don't have very much over the weekend. I would really, uh, especially this Christmas week, I happened to take a taxi yesterday and uh, one of the people was standing in the middle of the traffic, you know, trying to raise money. And it, I don't know anything about the fellow or not, but the cat, the taxi driver, who basically doesn't make very much at all, gave the guy $10. And uh, I said to him, I said, boy, I said, it's very, very strange for someone to, he said, anybody that's willing to stand out there and risk his life must really need it badly, a lot more than me. So I told him, look, I said, I'll cover the 10 for you, and uh, which was no big deal, but uh, my goodness, it was really sad. So please try to take care of some folks, especially the veterans, if you get a chance, homeless to children and stuff like that. Like that. Uh, you know, it's really fun. That's one of the advantages, folks, is when I, when I worked at Drexel, uh, this was you know, primarily 90% of the people there were uh, Jewish, and uh, you know they they celebrated all of the holidays, uh, Christmas, you know, all of them, and uh, it was uh, it was really amazing. But they were very very philanthropic. They made a lot of money, but they they gave a lot. Uh, fact is, when you first went to work for Drexel, they basically told you that you know five percent of your pay we expect you to, you know, give to the charities that we support, which were you know really terrific charities, and uh, that was was really no problem at the time. I thought it would be, but my goodness, you know, we were making so much money, it really didn't make anything. The, the offices there at Drexel were incredible. They had a giant Christmas tree every every year, and all that, starting with Hanukkah, which started yesterday, uh, they would have a giant bowl of uh, big, fresh shrimp in, a, in an ice sculptured, and it was uh, sitting there in the lobby for people that just walked in off the street. Most of them didn't do that because they were embarrassed to do it, but uh, all the customers came in with their families, and they had all kinds of little hors d'oeuvres with those giant shrimp. My kids still remember that. And uh, so it was really a wonderful, wonderful Christmas time. And you weren't expected to do a lot of business. Their, their feeling was if you hadn't made all your money by December 1st, you were in big trouble. So that's a, that's a part of the system of, uh, you know, the holidays and stuff. I don't think that goes goes on in Wall Street anymore, actually. I don't really think of uh, think what's happening. Uh, Bill's posting a thing, thing that Tom both said a 60% probability of closing higher today, uh, which is probably <laughs> – it's probably higher than 60% because it's been 100% for the last 13 weeks. <laughs> it's been higher, so we'll see. This is the 13th week, of course, of what we're looking at in here. In here. So we'll be, we'll be paying close attention to that as we go through. I did want to mention one other thing, and that is uh, be, be really mindful here, folks. This comes from Bill Gary of uh, Price Projections. Uh, he has a... a, a information on corn, where he's showing the seasonals with a really strong bullish bias into the early part of the year. And I have to agree with that. In fact, the corn is, is acting better than it has in quite some time. Uh, beans are acting okay, too. Whether this was related to uh, any of these things uh, uh, with the market, I have no idea with this Chinese tariff stuff, but I don't think anybody else does either. But who knows? We'll be able to see. Okay. We'll have to move on. And oh, I see that the Boeing uh, uh, announced its board of directors uh, chairman has changed. Of course, they're having trouble there because of their uh, airplane, I guess. And Tesla's having no trouble at all. They're, uh, they're just moving higher. So that's a good thing, too, I guess, if you're long to Tesla. Oh, all right. We want to talk just a tiny bit about the little piggies. Let's get these hogs up. I want to... Then we got it. Oh, my goodness. Time is coming so fast here. Where are the hogs? There we are. Here we go. 
We're in an area now we should get ready. I think here's what I think is happening. This is my two cents worth, folks. If you take a look at these hogs, you know, we've been up now eight, nine days. We get a little bit of a pullback here to around uh, 74 and a half. I think that would really be a nice. That's down about three cents from where we are right now. But this is a seasonal time. And if these things react really violently uh, to uh, big cash purchases, if, if there's a big retail demand for pork, during this time period, this, these hogs could move up eight, nine cents really quickly. Uh, we've seen, look at the April time period during Easter. You see what happened during that time frame? So that's, a, that's something to keep in mind. So uh, it's been a very tight trading range here for six days, right around the 77 to 78 level. So that means that something big is most probably getting ready uh, to, uh, to go. Okay. Uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we have our guest today is Mr. Norm Winsky of AstroTran. Norm, are you on the line? Yes, sir, Larry. Thank you very much for having me on. Well, happy holidays and happy holidays, everyone. Yeah. You bet. Feliz Navidad. Happy Hanukkah. So it's your mic. Go right ahead, my friend. It's your show. Okay. I got my notes up on the screen. Hopefully you can see them. 
or uh, we're, however we're you do that with the uh, Skype and the TFN. And you know, I'm gonna uh, first I'm gonna give you a little background information. Uh, so working on uh, three underlying, uh, two or three, a uh, couple underlying principles. Number one, good old Isaac Newton. I think he you had his account back in the at Drexel there, uh, Larry. He yes, said that I did. For huh? every oh, what's that? I had his account at Drexel. I did yes. There you go. For uh, didn't he? He was doing his charting. I think on one of the early Apple computers, right, Larry? Yes, and he used the 200-day uh, moving average quite extensively, as I recall. There you go. Wait until that uh, new moving I, I, average I, I, fell, I, I, fell enough off of the eggnog there, and then he, that was a signal, you know. Anyway, so they got that for every action. There's an opposite equal reaction, and also the key times will give you the key prices. Mr. Gann said that price is more important than time. Sort of proof of that somewhat to some degree is we all know that 95% of the people who are trading are not making any money. And what do most of those people do? They're trying to predict price. And so what you need to do is flip the formula around and predict time. Time will give you the price. You don't have to predict the price. Just have to find some good cycles that give you the time, okay? So that's what I'm going to do here. I use natural intelligence, not artificial intelligence. The intelligence that's hiding in the solar system, and we are all part of that solar system. Believe it or not, we're made of stardust. Ask any astrophysicist, and they will tell you that we are all made out of the same stuff that the planets and the solar system is made out of. And we're all vibrating on those uh, atoms and molecules together. So anyway, here we go. So you've heard me before, full moon, that's a big deal, you know, kind of a big deal. Uh, we round up the usual spots. Uh, you might want to take a screenshot of this uh, this uh, paragraph here where I have these different planetary events. So we had the, we're going to round up our usual suspects for a full moon. I was on your show uh, previously, Larry, on the 10th to talk about these events. So I'm going to review those. I also, in passing, mentioned some related things that were coming up after the, this uh, window here. We had a huge cluster here between the 11th and into the weekend of the 13th. So we had a full moon. We'll be looking at financials, grains, precious metals, stocks. Uh, we had a cluster of things to what's called the U.S. natal chart. That's based on where the plants were on July the 4th, 1776. I know that sounds crazy, but guess what? It works pretty well. And here we go. So we had this cluster here with Pluto to the U.S. ascended. If you know what that is, you know any astrology. Jupiter to where the Venus was on July the 4th, 1776. And Saturn lined up with uh, there again with the U.S. Venus. And for those, we look at stocks, U.S. stocks, T-bonds, dollar. And then we had uh, one of my favorite uh, long-term things, one of the things I first got involved with when I started doing this back in college, Jupiter 120 to Uranus. I stumbled on the Donald Bradley book, uh, Stock Market Prediction, Larry. Everybody loves in the back there, the Bradley Index. What I loved was in the middle of the book where you talked about the fade different angles of Jupiter and Uranus and how those corresponded to the 41 business cycle and growing up in the scrap business. That's what my family has done for several generations. I heard about my, my dad talking about copper prices, and I learned that that was going up and down with the 41 business cycle, which correlated very I went and researched it and found out that went up and down nicely with Jupiter and Uranus, and later I found out that Uranus was sort of the planetary uh, ruling planet for copper. And I invested back in the college there, and took I had an inheritance from an uncle, and I took most of that and plowed it into a big copper mining company, Anaconda Copper, who had just been decimated, uh, half their mines taken away in Chile by the Marxist Allende, and the copper prices were in the toilet. And so the, the, when I went in to talk to the brokers there in Terre Haute, Indiana, Larry, they all tried to talk me out of it. They thought I was crazy. They want to buy that stock. And the copper was trading about 55 cents. And because I did this based on Jupiter and Uranus, what I learned at Bradley's book and my own research. And 18 months later, copper was at all-time new highs at $1.41 on the LME. So I did, I did pretty good. I took that chunk of money I made on that. And that helped finance my buying a membership on the CBOE, Chicago Board Options Exchange, in 1975. That helped change my life. All right, there we go. Moving ahead. And I bought that book, by the way, for 10 cents, Larry. It was marked down to 10 cents, that Bradley book. All right, anyway, there we go. We're going to look at these. I have these in chronological order, but the charts I put in 
in alphabetical order, just a, kind of a simple order. Here's your cattle. Okay, as you might guess, well, you may not know, but if you picked a sign out of the Zodiac, there's Taurus the bull. You might guess that goes with cattle, and that's what I found out what's, what works. There's Jupiter 120 to Uranus on the evening of the, uh, the 13th into the weekend there, and there it is right there where the green arrow is, and guess what? That's very close to the top there on the cattle. Uranus is in Taurus right now, and so in Jupiter, when anything happens with Uranus in the sign Taurus, you want to watch for a possible change in trend in, in cattle. Now, we've been coming down here, and I guess this is the geocentric version, which is from the point of view of the Earth is geocentric, and then we just had over the weekend here, we just had heliocentric Jupiter 120 to Uranus, and so we, we have a potential here for a low on the cattle right now. That's the turn here today, or forget about it, you know. Here's coffee. Okay, boys and girls, I'm going to take this to a whole other level now. Get out your calculators. Uh, now, Capricorn is the sign for coffee. Back here in October, on the 18th, this only occurs every 11 and a half, 12 years, that uh, planet Jupiter goes into a particular sign, and then it stays there for about a year. So it's uh, ju a heliocentric Jupiter, on the 18th of October, went into Capricorn, the sign for coffee. It was one day off the absolute low. But I don't want you to, to, to worry about the low price. Look at the next day's price. And I'm going to prove to you my principle that the key times give you the key prices. If you try to do it from the absolute low the day before, it won't work as well. So let's take that price there. You see the price on my chart there? 96.05 was the low. Then the next big point was early December. December late on the second, early on the third, uh, geocentric. That's from the point of view of the Earth. Uh, uh, Jupiter went into Capricorn, and we thought, oh, we'll probably get a top there, but it, that didn't work, and it looked like it was a, a total strikeout failure. But guess what? We got some important information from that window, and the high on the third was, oh, or in this box here, 124.75. Now take the difference of those two. I think you're going to get 28.70. If you here's Fibonacci, if you multiplied the t difference there, 2870, that range, by 1.618, I think you're going to get, a, it's unbelievable, 1.618 times 28.7 is 46.43 added to 96.05 is 142.486. And the high on the high day there on the 17th coming into Jupiter trying Uranus. Jupiter's a Capricorn and 120 to Uranus was 142.45. It's off by three little pennies there, you know? That's true. Well, we got to pay a few bills, Norm. We'll be right back, okay? okay. Do you have time? Yes, sir. I okay. Time. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're talking with Norm Winsky of AstroTran. Norm, that last segment really hit the spot for the folks here at TFNFNN. So anytime you start talking numbers like that, uh, they'll be more than happy to uh, listen to what you have to say. So continue on, my friend. Okay, great. Now we got copper. I told you about how I made a chunk of dough there in college uh, on the copper market. With the first trade I ever made, I was 21 years old when I did that. And uh, it was based on the different angles of Jupiter and Uranus. And here we have it again. Uh, last a week ago, on the end of the weekend of the 13th, we had the geocentric Jupiter 120 to Uranus, and there was a high. And uh, we went sideways, but I thought yeah, I'd said on the on your show there last time with, with in reference to Jupiter and Uranus, going to be like a two-pronged thing. First, you got the geocentric, then this week, past weekend, you had the heliocentric. So the market just went sideways. I think we went all of 30 little pennies higher here, so 20, 30 pennies higher there. That high at this now these markets if they don't turn within a week, one day one trading day of uh, the window then as they say in the, the uh, uh, in the uh, movies sir Larry forget about it you know, right there we go so it's not working okay. right but it should the copper is probably top a good chance the copper may be high here and we're going to turn down here now here's the, let's look at the the grains and the moon uh, the very dancing very nicely to the of the 12th and if you testing one two three testing one two three uh, uh, norm i'm afraid you're breaking up i don't know what the problem is uh did you pay your phone bill down there I know you hear me, but I don't think we can hear Norm. That's the problem, and he's in the driver's seat. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I'll, you know, let me try. Uh, well, I don't think Skyping him will make up uh, anything. No, but he's definitely Hello, breaking up. I can't hey, hear you, Larry. You. Yeah, well, I can hear you, Norm, but you've been breaking up. We've only heard about one out of every ten words. Wow. Well, breaking up is hard to do, you know, Larry. Oh, you should make a song out of that. I think that might be a song there. Okay, hey. good thing you can hear me now, Larry. So anyway. You broke up again, Norm. The trading gods are astrologically misinformed today. We're not getting any information from, uh, he might have got hit by a meteor. Who knows? Uh that was Neil Sedeka, wasn't it? I could sing a few bars of that. Hey, let me tell you about a great, uh, a great human interest story I heard today, folks. It was on CNN. Guy's fishing out on the pier there in Florida, and he's got uh, two fish, and he's walking off the, uh, you know, the dock, and he gets stopped by the game warden, and he says, "Do you have a license for those fish?" 
And he said, well, no, I don't. And he said, well, I'm going to have to give you a $200 fine. He says, what do you mean, $200 fine? These are my pet fish. Fish. He says, what do you mean, your pet fish? He said, well, he says, I take him out here every afternoon, let him swim for a while, and I take him home. He said, that's the biggest crock of baloney I've ever heard. He said, let me show you, let me show you. So he takes the fish and he tosses him into the ocean and he waits and waits. And the warden, warden says, uh, well, where, uh, where are they? And the guy says, where's what? And he said, the fish. And he said, what fish? <laughs> I thought that was a terrific joke for Christmas time. Didn't even have any, any bad words in it. Even, my, uh, even my, uh, my grandsons liked it. So I hope you liked it as much as I did. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to have, have Norm back another day because we have totally lost him. There must be uh, a meteor shower out there in Naples, Florida today. But let's uh, take a quick look at a couple of charts that I did want to go over. Well, with you, uh, these are char charts from uh, these are the head and shoulders patterns that someone had sent us about uh, uh, Tosco. Let's get this up here to take a quick look at it. These are just the one that. Uh yeah, listen, any complaints, I'll tell you where to send your information, okay? But I thought it was a pretty funny joke. Here's a perfect head and shoulders pattern, folks. The reason why is the left shoulder and the right shoulder equal. The only thing is, is if the right shoulder were over it, so the time was perfect. In other words, from the left shoulder to the top, the head to the other shoulder, it would be, would be perfect it were, if it were perfect in time. But you don't get it. But you have you have the same, look at, the, look at how long it took to make the right shoulder. And that right shoulder is only a three. 382 off of the head. That's a this is a very bearish pattern in this particular one. It it really does. And it does, you know, the ABC structure on this, just the ABCD structure takes you to 77 and a half, and we're trading at 9217. So that's uh, part of the reason reasoning behind that pattern. And if it works, you know, it you know, it's really a good one. So keep that in mind. All right, let's get up to another one that we wanted to cover here. Uh, this is one. Uh, by the way, I, I posted a chart of Bryce Gilmore, myself, and Rich Anderson from 1988 in Las Vegas, uh, and uh, that was back in the old days. And uh, Rich still looks the same, but uh, neither Bryce and I do, do not look the same anymore. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one that I wanted to bring to your attention. This could have a big information here. Look, look at the look at the banking index stock here, folks. This you'd think with the interest rates the way they are, the banking index would really be going wacko. You can, you can see we made the big A B C D up there. We've been here at 113 for six days. Even when the market is screaming, making new highs, that banking index is. Now, whether that's going to mean anything or not, I don't know. But that's neither here nor there. We'll pay uh, close attention to, the, to that as we uh, look at, uh, at some of these other things that we're paying very close attention to. The uh, other one that I wanted to mention to you is the uh, – the volume in Apple. This was sent to us by one of our astu astute traders over in uh, the uh, Valley of the Wind, Las Vegas. You'll notice here that when you have these big spikes in volume, there's lots of things happening with Apple. And look at look at the volume we had in Apple: 71 million shares, folks. That's a lot of shares. Uh, whether that's going to mean anything or not, I don't know. But uh, it is a lot of volume going on. So so we'll see if that is going to be the case. Now tomorrow uh, we'll. We we will be in business. It's going to be a half a day session, of course, I believe. And Christmas Eve is pretty much nothing. Uh, are we going to be closed Christmas Eve? Do, do we know that yet, uh, Tommy? Could you let me know? Because I, I know we're open tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is Christmas Eve. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Okay, that's a half a day. So we'll see you on Christmas Eve. But be, be sure, folks, we've got a couple of minutes here before the next break. But try try to do something special uh, for the people that don't have very much. That's what we're here on this planet for. Remember, you're going to leave with the same amount of money that Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, uh, Bob Hope, all the other rich guys did. So Bitcoin, I have the Bitcoin. Oh, dear, I hope I saved it. I hope I did. Oh, the Bitcoin's had a nice move. It's starting to move, folks. That move on Bitcoin was really – I want to show you that Bitcoin chart here because it's that important. Let me get it up here to uh, – oh, please, please tell me I saved it. Please tell me I saved it. Oh, I'll bring it up to you in just a second here. I have to uh, move it around just a little bit. And then we will be uh, okay. Uh, let's get around here to the thing, and I'll be up here to get it. And I'll, I'll post that bit, Bitcoin chart because it's really starting to move. It really is. It's getting a real good shot here to take a look at it. So uh, I want you to be able to uh, 
to see it. Oh, boy, if I've lost it, I'm going to be upset. Uh, I guess it's here. I will get it up here. So give me a second here, and we'll be back. And we'll have Norm on again. Uh, we'll have Norm on Christmas Day. Oh we're, oh, we're closed Christmas Day. We can't have Norm on then. So we'll move on to the next one here. Eight, seven, seven. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during our trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and uh, we're chatting with Norm Winsky. Norm, you got the last three minutes, my friend. Talk to you later. Go ahead. Oops, okay, like we don't thank have you. Norm. You don't want okay, you got it. Okay, there we go. So, so I'm going to go through these charts very quick. We got a limited time. So well, there, well, there's a bad connection there, Norm. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but it's really not a very good connection. Not a very good connection. Who knows? Well, folks, I don't know what to say. Don't know what to do. Well, we'll just have to not worry about what's going to happen with. Uh, our good friend Norm, but by golly, that's what's happening. We've lost him, and I hopefully will get him back. You know what I think it is. I think Santa has hijacked his sleigh. That's my guess, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, folks, we're going to uh, 
have a uh, tomorrow I'm going to just do some history stuff and uh, you know uh, more of a not going to be much of a trading day tomorrow but I want to share some inside information on you know the ups and downs I had I'm going to focus on the the real key times in my life where I really had some some horrible things happening and uh, you know how I handled it and stuff like that because you know I've been doing this things for wow since 1959 folks you know how many years that is is it 60 years Hard to believe, huh? <laughs> and I still like it. That's the that's the main thing. Uh, anyway, we'll see. Anyway, we'll do that tomorrow. Make sure you take care. Promise me, raise your hand. Your hand. Promise me you take care of some people that don't have much over the holidays, folks. It's really important because we when you make those uh, whether whether you believe in anything or not, helping another human being is really why we're, we 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 should really focus on that, folks. So let's try to do that. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless. And we'll see you folks on the flip side tomorrow, tomorrow which is Christmas Eve. And we will be uh, having a very, very interesting holiday as always. And we got a wonderful new year coming up. So that's it. So may God bless. And we'll see you folks tomorrow.